what is up YouTube so today what I got in store over here is the 3d connection wireless mouse and um, we're gonna go over its specs what it's used for whether or not you should buy it and also if it's basically the construction if it's well worth the money that you pay for it if you do decide to buy it and whether or not I would purchase one again okay let's get into this review so it's not your traditional uh, standard mouse and it does not take place of your traditional standard mouse it works in conjunction with your traditional mouse okay and this will be used for any type of software that's like three-dimensional rendering um, any type of artwork uh, along the lines of also uh, any type of design work um, this thing will be handy for it let's go over what it has okay so you'll get for a wireless one you'll get a cord to charge it it's micro usb okay it's right here you plug it in it charges it okay you get a little dongle and uh, the wireless ones you'll know because they'll say wireless on the top the wired ones will just plug in direct there's a direct uh, connection here so you don't plug it in but you do plug it into your computer of course okay now it comes with two buttons so they got a few different ones um, that they're selling they have this version which has the two buttons and then they have uh, one with the little display and then they have a bigger one uh, with the larger display I'll, I'll show you some of those uh, some images of those and what the difference is um, it will not replace your traditional mouse so to get that off the table it does not replace your traditional mouse it works in conjunction with your traditional mouse and we'll, I'll show you how this works okay so given that this one's not the original cord it comes with it comes with its own brand I don't have that would I recommend the wireless over the wired? Well, that all depends at the price point you get it at, okay? I paid $40 for this mouse right here, okay? Used. Um, wired ones used were going for about $80, $70, okay? New, they're about $100, $120. This one sells new for about $140 to $170, okay? The larger ones are going to retail for somewhere around that $300 range because they come with additional buttons uh, that you can map out uh, the same as your keyboard uh, which will come in handy if you use this a lot okay so this isn't a small investment if you're looking into this this is going to run you a pretty penny for what it does and I'll show you what it does before I get into whether or not it's worth the investment so the first thing you want to do is download 3D Connection Home, okay? Once you download that, you save it, run it, and you'll be greeted with this, all right? Next thing you do is make sure you plug in the dongle to the area you want, to, uh, you want this to be at. Remember, this has a light uh, illumination at the bottom of it, and it will not show unless it's plugged in. So. For instance, if I turn this on, I'm only greeted with the light on the back side of it um, on the 3D connection space mouse. Okay, I have to plug this in, so you want to make sure you plug that in once you download the software. Okay, and then when you turn it on here, everything illuminates. All right, it'll go off if it's not in use. So, as you can see, it just went off because I don't have a software open um, to run this right now, okay? Okay, so what you wanna do first is start the trainer, okay? So I'll bring it over here. Gives you a little video, just skip that. So the first motion is up and down. So you lift up on the puck and you push down on the puck, okay? So we'll do that right now. And as you can see, it's moving the model up and down. And I mean, this motion is real subtle. So if you look right here, 
it's real subtle movements and it moves it a lot okay so we go to the next one it's left and right so if I push to the right and to the left it moves it very smooth all right next one is front to back so of course that's going to allow you to bring in the object and push it away uh, and then the twist motion is left and right uh, twist so you're twisting it like this and it moves it and then front to back so that's going to give you that roll okay object and then side to side same thing so what I did here was when I moved it from left to right I accidentally pushed down uh, diagonal and that's what's going to give you that air because it wants you to do uh, perfect m uh, movements okay so that's one thing I found finicky with uh, running one of these and then of course it allows you to do move this all by itself but that's one thing I found finicky is when you're holding it if you're not holding it directly so they got these indication marks right here so if you're not gripping this properly you will never know what's left and right front to back so these indication marks are key to be able to manipulate your model uh, the way you want it to okay so you can set the settings up here right but this is a bad way to do it make sure you open up whatever uh, software you're going to use while you do this because if i set it up here and go to my software it doesn't carry over open up your software and then set the settings because it's going to set them proprietary to that software and i had to find that out the hard way um, i couldn't i couldn't figure out why my settings kept going back because you have so for instance you go to advanced settings you select all these options and then you're able to uh, slide them to whatever position you want for your uh, how fast you want everything to move but once i selected all this there's no save so you go close um, set the buttons up so you could select these buttons go to keyboard macros whatever you want each button to do it will do um, but I made the it, I messed up by setting the settings here going into um, my software that I was going to use it in and then like moving the, this mouse slightly and it was flying everywhere and I know I put it at like a, a third of the way so uh, a third of half so somewhere about right here and um, it was still way too fast and I, I didn't understand why it was so fast so I went back to the settings and all my settings were set as default and it's because I didn't set them for the program I was using make sure that before you buy one of these 3d connection space mice that it's compatible with your program you're gonna use it for ultimately okay for instance, um, Simplified 3D, um, it's not compatible with completely. I can't push down on it or pull up, but what I can do is rotate the puck front to back, uh, cam it. And side to side does not work either. It's the front to back motion that only works to zoom in and out. That's the only thing that works on Simplified 3D. I'm pretty sure I could um, push one of the buttons if I have it programmed to do something here um, that a key would do. So if your keyboards, um, if your keyboard like basically says, if I push uh, L on my keyboard, it rotates the left view. If you program that to one of the buttons, it will do that. Um, but you're limited to what it's gonna allow you to do. Okay, so when using uh, software like SolidWorks, You'll notice that there's a little cube that pops up here when the mouse is in use. So let me see if I can bring that in. So a little cube pops up in the origin where it's rotating from. Um, so if you're panning left to right, it'll switch from one side to the other to show you that the mouse is in session um, or in use. And of course you could uh, manipulate your part or whatever and do full motions push it out pull it forward side pan tilt whatever have you 
So going over the settings again, you want to make sure your program's open like this and then set your settings and then say close or whatever. And then when you open them back up, your settings are implemented. Here's the center line my settings now over here. Um, but of course, what I do is I'll run it in the background so that way I always have it open and then I'll adjust it. So if I'm rotating model and see how it's going too slow, I'll speed that up. Um, okay. So the biggest question is, is it worth purchasing? So would I purchase this again? Okay. Yes and no. Okay. If I had to pay full price, I would not purchase this uh, puck. It's more of a glorified uh, item. And if you're working and you have one of these, you're going to want to be able to um, use it at work. And the only way you're going to get proficient and continue your workflow is if you have two of these. So if you're at work, you want to make sure that you have two, one for home use and one for work. So that way you're workflow does not change and you make this a habit of using or else what you'll end up doing is using your mouse going back to your mouse because this has a big learning curve okay whether or not you want to spend the time learning this is totally up to you because it, you're not going to learn it overnight the the cool thing about this uh, puck though i found I find is I could rotate a model and pan it towards me really smooth it's really smooth motions you know so if you're doing a lot of models this is real jerky so if I got to sit there and like you know reposition my cursor every time I rotate this model it's real jumpy so you're always pushing on the scroll wheel sliding your mouse letting go sliding your mouse letting go this will hurt your wrist over a period of time this will make it a lot easier if you're willing to invest the time into learning how to use it okay so i have i use control and um i use control a lot and escape so these buttons are programmed to those so the one i would recommend would be something like this the so space mouse pro 3d or the enterprise with the screen. Um, if you don't care about the screen, uh, I definitely recommend getting the, the Pro. It's $280 versus $379, okay? As you can see, the wired one is $121 and the wireless is $299. Um, but I mean, there's deals to be had out there, so don't pay full price. Let's see, as you can see, B&H has it for $139. Uh, compared to Amazon for $2.99 so but I would recommend this because you have uh, you have keys here that you could use you have escape control shift alt all in one centralized location and then you have one two three four you have numbers or you have other buttons you could um, program here ergonomically it looks like it would fit your hand a lot better and then you could just toggle over with your, um, with these fingers as you hold the puck to hit uh, more of these buttons that you use quite often, okay? If you go back to the Enterprise, of course, it's gonna give you a lot more options. Um, so you're looking at the full keypad up here, number keypad. This alone would sell me on this one because I use tab, control, alt, shift, and I use one through 12, or you know, one through 10 at least. And if these ones are bound to your keys on your keyboard, um, such as these keys on this side, then those numbers would be perfect. And you would never have to use a keyboard if you got something like this. Also, it looks like they're showing uh, SolidWorks here. So they have extrude, sketch, everything right here that you could also bind to the numbers. So that way you don't have to take your hands off and use your hotkeys. You could program your hotkeys to these numbers as well. So the verdict on this uh, mouse, is it for me? And I'm sadly gonna have to say no because it doesn't have enough function for me to use. 
if I was designing like some type of uh, character or something where I need to do organic shapes, this would be great. But I would opt out for this one. If you could save the money for this one, definitely get this one over this. If you're just seeing if you, you're gonna like using this, definitely don't buy it new, buy a used one. So that's gonna complete today's video on the 3D wireless mouse. As you can see, it also is scrolling for me. Uh, so, I mean, it works on web pages. But that's gonna complete today's video on this 3D mouse. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see content like this and other content I'll be posting on my channel, definitely consider subscribing. Until next time, I'll see y'all in the next one.